Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending this uh, morning's program. We're really excited. At this time, I'm going to request you restrict your phone, restrict the volume on your phone, and we look forward to a great and exciting program. But before we get started, I wanted to introduce a special, special guest. Ms. Kathleen Harris. She's the former national president of the National Associ Association of Military Women. Would you stand so that we could welcome you to this event? Thank you, Ms. Harris. And I always say good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to this very important event, CAU Salutes, Honor and Duty, Reflecting Forward our official Veterans Day observance at Clark Atlanta University. My name is Sam Burston, in case you didn't know, and I'm the VP of University Relations at CAU, and it is my honor to serve as today's Master of Ceremonies as we come to you from the Virginia Lacey Jones Exhibition Hall in the Atlanta University Center Robert W. Woodruff Library. Please rise for the presentation of colors from the Atlanta University Center Honor Guard. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem performed by members of the renowned Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society under the direction of Dr. Curtis E. Powell. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed Flag was 
are still there. Oh, say does the star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Denise. You, you may take your seat. Let's give her another huge round of applause. Now, we're so excited about Denise and the CAU Philharmonic. Dr. Sadler and I were uh, accompanied her Sunday to a special event and where she and another music student received a scholarship. So let's give her another big hand. We are here today to proudly honor our heroes, to remember their achievements, their courage, their dedication, and to simply say, Thank you, thank you, thank you for their sacrifices. This is an important tradition at Clark Atlanta University and it is one we honor every year as part of CAU Salutes. CAU Salutes is organized by the Office of University Relations, the University Veterans Affairs Department in the Office of the Registrar, and this year's institutional partner, the Clark Atlanta University School of Business Administration. And now, please welcome to the podium the Dean of the CAU School of Business Administration, Dr. Sylvanus Udoka, followed by University Registrar, Ms. Susan W. Gibson. Dean Udoka. Good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, Dr. Sylvanus Udoka, Dean of the School of Business Administration here at Clark Atlanta University. I thank each and every one of you for being here uh, this morning to recognize the service of our valiant veterans. On this beautiful Veterans Day, this morning I bring you greetings and I offer this prayer to the veterans in our community and to veterans everywhere. Father, please turn your gaze on those men and women who in their military service have sacrificed time, comfort, strength, ambition, health, and prosperity for the peace and safety of family and friends and others that they have never even known. Please reward them a hundredfold for all their sacrifice and service. Bless them far beyond all their expectations. Reward them richly for all they have given to preserve our freedom. Amen. Today we come together to pay tribute to the thousands of CAU Panthers, students, staff, faculty and alumni, and the millions of Americans around the country who have served this nation so courageously in uniform. Our theme for today is honor and duty reflecting forward, which coincides with our year-long celebration of the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Clark Atlanta University School of Business Administration. Many who have learned and taught at this school have served in the nation's armed services. Some of them, including a few here this morning, have served in combat and have helped to sh shape the course of history. It is for this reason that the CAU School of Business Administration is so proud to serve as the host for this year's CAU Salutes event. Honor and duty is rooted in the values of our veterans. And it is reflected in the faces and memories of our service members 
in our community here and in the communities around the world. To these courageous men and women and their families, please know that the nation will forever be in your debt for your self selfless sacrifice and courage. On behalf of the students, faculty, staff, and alumni of the School of Business Administration here at CAU, and indeed the entire uh, uh, CAU nation, we here present pause to honor you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. Good morning. good morning. Oh, that was really not good. Good morning. good morning. We're here for a special occasion, and we need to show smiles on our faces behind the mask. You know, sometimes the eyes are the windows to the soul. Your mouth may not be seen, but your eyes can tell me so much about how joyful you are today and how you are here to celebrate Veterans Day with us. Now, Mr. Burson said my name was Susan W. Gibson and I am the registrar. That W stands for wonderful, so I want you to know that. <laughs> See, we have to always start our day with a smile so that we can keep going through that day in a positive way. Now, why is the university registrar up here celebrating Veterans Day with you? Well, let me give you a little lesson. CAU Veterans Affairs Services are housed within the office of the University Registrar, and Ms. L.B. Montellis is that Veterans Affairs Coordinator, and many of the veterans know that. Now, her purpose is to assist the students receiving VA educational benefits and to provide a seamless transition for our nation's veterans, but not only their veteran, the veterans, but their dependents. And that is to help them to move into a, a, a positive academic camps, campus life and then to transition to their uh, respective careers or their desired careers after they leave campus. It is uh, an honor <laughs> once again to be a part of this national time-honored tradition that goes way all the way back to World War I. How many of you knew that? Raise your hand. See, that's why we have Veterans Day. You see, being a part of a, 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 a collegiate community, education not only takes place in the classroom in its formal in, uh, way, it also takes place as we are in programs, in, in, in campus activities. That's why it's important for us to have our students to participate, and we participate so that we can learn. But let me tell you this, Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11th, 1919. Do you know what that represented? If you do, raise your hand. This is a participatory pre presentation. Raise your hand. Oh my goodness, it is an educational day. That was the first anniversary of the end of World War I. How about that? Did you know that? Okay. But then Congress passed a resolution in 1926 for an annual observance of Veterans Day. But it was just an annual observance. It did not say where, when, how, what time, or whatever. But in 1938, November 11th became the national holiday for Veterans Day. And why did that happen? That happened because each year, on November 11th, in honor of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 that signaled the end of World War I. Now I want you to, did, did you hear what I just said? Yet? I'm gonna say it two to three times, okay? Because you, you're gonna have a quiz after it's over. See, you are in class, okay? Uh, the holiday occurs each year on November what? In honor of the, the 11th, <laughs> of the 11th, of the 11th, and what year was that? 
1918. That signaled the end of World War I. Now, did you know that? So now you can go back and share, and then when you have the conversations about Veterans Day, you can let people know that at Clark Atlanta University, uh, we were taught the, the really history of, of Veterans Day. But see, unlike Memorial Day, now all of us are familiar with Memorial Day, right? And we can kind of figure that in because it says Memorial, which honors those who died while in military service. Veterans Day is a distinct public holiday in that it celebrates the service of all U.S. military veterans, whether they died in war, died after war, or whatever. It just represents, and, and we celebrate that. But then, whew, how about this? In 2016, under President, I'm gonna roll those R's, President <laughs> Barack Obama, he signed our president signed the Veterans Day Moment of Silence Act into law. And why did he do that? He wanted us to make sure that we gave homage to all of the service that these people had given, these veterans have given to us, all of the military, so that we can make them know how much we appreciate them. So we are here today and I'm telling you, they gave me a, a mammoth task because I got to talk to y'all up until 11 o'clock. Why? <laughs> Today is the 11th day of the 11th month, and as we approach the 11th hour, the committee and all of us are going to ask you that everyone here join in the traditional moment of silence to honor our service members. You see, by coming together in silence as a community and as a nation, we send a powerful message of appreciation to all veterans and, and all that they have done for our country. And in, in this time, when we, uh, we need that silence just for us right now because in this country, not only the veterans, but we all have suffered that time where we, ha we are into the war. It was a different kind of a war but it was not a military war. We have come out of war of being shut in, being to ourselves, and we are now here. And we can even make silence for that. But the most important silence today is going to be that we are going to be silent for our veterans and let them know that we are here to just make sure they're happy. Now, I'm gonna have my quiz. Do I need to call somebody out? Do I need to call somebody out? So why are we here? I want, I want to hear you say, we are celebrating the what? We are celebrating Veterans Day. And why is Veterans Day Veterans Day? Because we are celebrating the what? The 11th? No, let's go. 11th day, 11th hour, 11th month. Okay? And that's very important. Now. I got the signal back there that I have one minute, so I got to figure out something else. I can be silent for a whole minute, and then we can be silent for three minutes, but anybody who knows me know that it's hard for me to be silent for one minute by myself. I don't, you know, I even snore in my sleep. I can't even be silent when I'm asleep. So you know I can't be, a, be silent when I'm awake. But it's, it's huh? Then, oh, no, not yet. That ain't ready for that. See, see, you know what? See, that's what silence is all about. He up here, he's talking to me, telling me how to run my show. <laughs> but see, he has the voice. He has that, uh, that uh, MC voice. I just have that voice. You know, I'm Miss Gibson, you know, so I just, I'm wonderful Gibson, so I just have that voice. And we have a few more seconds, so I just want you to be in the posture of appreciation and the posture of meditation, knowing that this is a very significant, it is 11 o'clock, let us be silent.
this ends our moment, our two minutes of silence. Can't you see how significant that is? When the world was all in turmoil and the bombs bursting and all of that, we heard this. The writer Miguel Montaigne once said, valor is stability, not of legs and arms, but of courage and the soul. To those with stability of courage and the soul, I offer the lyrics to the third stanza of the Star Spangled Banner. We very rarely hear it sung, and we really don't know what it says because we don't ever use it. And it says, oh, thus be it ere, when free men shall stand between their love's homes and the war's desolation, blessed with victory and peace, may the heavens rescue the land. Praise the power that has made and preserved us a nation. And conquer we must when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. And thus the star-spangled banner in triumph yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave, and it goes like this. Oh, thus be it air when free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation bless with victory and peace may the heavens rescue the land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation and conquer we must when our cause it is just star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Oh, come on, you guys can do better than that. What a powerful rendition. Would all members who have served and who are currently serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, would you please stand? Would you please stand and be recognized? Everyone, all of you. Thank you so much, Dean Yudoka and Susan W. Gibson, that was so extremely powerful. I my have, uh, in terms of my siblings, uh, two of my older brothers served in the uh, military, in the Army, U.S. Army, and two of my sisters served in the, uh, in the military. So thank you again. Let's give her one more round of applause because that was so powerful. And uh, thank you as well, uh, Dean Yadoko, for your powerful words. From beautiful music to beautiful prose, we now honor you with a dramatic reading presented by CAU finance and financial planning student, Christian Mason Smith, class of 2023. Come on up, Christian. Good morning, everybody. Uh, First of all, I want to thank you all for coming out and helping us support the veterans. Uh, I indeed will not be giving a quiz like Ms. Susan, so uh, I'm just here to read y'all the poem. The Young Warrior by James Weldon Johnson. Mother, shed no mournful tears, but, give me, but gird me my sword, and give me utterance to thy fears, but bless me with thy word. The lines are drawn, the fight is on, 
a cause is to be won. Mother, look not so white and wan, give Godspeed to thy son. Now let thine eyes my way pursue, wherever my footsteps fare, and when they lead beyond thy view, send after me a prayer. But pray not to defend from harm, nor a danger to dispel. Pray, rather that with steadfast arm, I fight the battle well. Pray, mother of mine, that I always keep my heart and purpose strong, my sword unsullied and ready to leap, unsheathed against the wrong. The Young Warrior by James Weldon Johnson. And thank you, Christian, for invoking James Weldon Johnson, lift every voice and sing. Thank you, Christian. Many notable business leaders, entrepreneurs, alumni, and faculty and staff throughout the history of Clark Atlanta University or its CAU School of Business Administration have proudly served in the U.S. Armed Forces during the program, uh, in the Armed Forces, I'm sorry. During the program, I will evoke uh, some of their names. And the first one I want, wanted to evoke was Major Richard R. Wright. Now, he was a superstar. He graduated from AU in 1876. He was a valedictorian at Atlanta University's first commencement in 1876, and he was the first president of Georgia State Industrial College, which is now known as Savannah State University. Major Richard R. Wright, U.S. Army. Now we are delighted and we are privileged to have a special presentation from Dr. Ed Davis, professor, and, Doc, and Christine M. Smith, chair of the CAU School of Business Administration. Dr. Davis. Thank you so much. Uh, with apologies to Susan, you took the mic almost like a professor. Once you give a professor the mic, they never want to turn it loose. And <laughs> you did your job well. Thank you. Dean Yudoka, distinguished guests, fellow veterans. It is really my honor to stand here today as we reflect upon the service of our veterans, as well as the patriotic past of this great institution. Clark Atlanta University boasts a long legacy when it comes to honor and duty to the nation. Our founding institutions, Atlanta University and Clark College, were among Georgia's first to participate in the Student Army Training Corps. And during World War I, our institution served as a military post, first for the Army School of, for Mechanics, and later the Army Administration School in World War II. On the high seas, the SS James Weldon Johnson and the SS John Hope were World War II Liberty ships, named in honor of two of our most distinguished and illustrious luminaries. And then up in the clouds, members of the CAU community faced danger in the war-scarred skies as Tuskegee Airmen. Many patriotic Panthers have led the charge in service to this nation. Sam just talked about one Richard Wright. Again, he was our first valedictorian in 1876, and the building that now houses the business school is named in his honor. Also, there was Lieutenant Thelma B. Brown, a 1937 graduate who was among the first African-American officers in the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, better known as the WACs. During World War II, she served as the conductor for the first and only all-black female band in the U.S. military history. Or there is Sergeant William T. Roby, class of 1948, who, who enlisted in the U.S. Army during World War II and later served as a faculty member in the School of Business for over 20 years. Mr. Roby just recently turned 101 years old. He wanted to be here today, 
but he just said those 101-year-old legs would not get him here. So we honor Mr. William Roby. I'm going to go off script for a moment. There's also Dr. Ed Irons, who served as the dean of the business school, who recently turned 98 years old. He, too, wanted to be here. I'm standing here in his stead because he was known as Big Ed, and I was known as Little Ed in the School of Business. So thank you, Dr. Irons, for your service. From the Spanish-American War in 1898 to the Afghan Wars of 2021, the sons and daughters of this great institution have faithfully served and continues to serve our nation. On this day of reflecting forward, we remember their service as we honor all of you today for yours. Understanding that we as a nation go about the business of our days while our military personnel work tirelessly to ensure we can do so. I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege because during the Vietnam War, I served as a lieutenant in the United States Army Air Defense, and I would have been a forward observer in Vietnam calling in strikes. Their average lifespan was 18 seconds. My brother, Major Charles Davis, did a second tour in Vietnam to keep me out. I would be remiss if I were to stand here and not thank my brother for his second tour of service to keep me out of Vietnam. Major Charles Davis, thank you. We have in the audience one of our current students. Please stand up, who's in the military. Please stand up. Let's give her a round of applause. You see, Susan, I can go off script, too. Thank you all for your service, your sacrifice, and love of country. We in the business school salute all veterans across this great nation for their sacrifice and service. Thank you very much. Let's give Dr. Davis another big round of applause. And our student, uh, Lieutenant Chelsea C. Kearney. Chelsea, stand up again so that we can see. Well, thank you. Thank you for your service. And Dr. Davis, I wanted to mention one more since we covered uh, AU, we covered Clark College, uh, we co covered CAU, but I wanted to cover Clark University. Sergeant Wendell T. Cunningham, U.S. Army. Uh, Clark University, 1913. He served in World War II. Now, he was the first known African-American graduate of the Harvard School of Business in 1915. Let's give the lieutenant a big round of applause for that. <laughs> At this time, we ask those veterans who are present today and are able to stand to accept a small token of our appreciation for your strength, your valor, and your service. As they receive the special token, we also ask the CAU Philharmonic to give us another great musical selection. Dr. Davis. Prior to that selection, we will be pinning our veterans with the School of Business 75, 75th anniversary pin reflecting forward as we celebrate throughout this year. So would all the veterans in the audience please stand. And remain standing until you're pinned as the CAU Philharmonic takes the stage.
Good morning. We live in a land of freedom today because of our veterans. They deserve our thanks, our respect, and our love. The song American Tears is a tribute to our veterans. We know that music can be so extremely helpful and important in the healing and restoration process. It can bring us together in ways we never deemed possible. The Philharmonic Society sings and dedicates this selection to all veterans, our heroes and sheroes, our patriots and our soldiers. We will always be American and we will always cry American tears.
Let's give him another big round of, of applause. I will always cry American tears. You will also be able to hear the CAU Philharmonic Society on November 21st, 7.06 p.m. at Friendship Baptist Church for our holiday concerts, 7.06 p.m. Let us salute our veterans with a huge round of applause. Come on, let's. Thank you, thank you. I now invite uh, Dean Udoka uh, back to the podium for closing remarks. Thank you so much, Mr. Burston. Thank you for a great job of emceeing. How about another rousing round of applause for the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society under the direction of Dr. Curtis E. Powell. And how about a round of applause for our veterans here present. These heroes that we celebrate today and others around the world are part of a unique legacy. As the country celebrates Veterans Day today, let us all recommit ourselves to the principles of liberty and freedom for which these brave men and women have worked so tirelessly and have given so much. I want to take these final moments to thank this year's uh, CAU Salutes sponsor, uh, Chick-fil-A, for providing our breakfast today. I also want to thank all of our colleagues here at CAU who have helped to make this day possible. Uh, you will see uh, the listing of, of sponsors in the back of your program. They're all, they all listed uh, there, including, of course, CAU TV, the Clark Lennon University uh, Philharmonic Society, and a whole host of others who have worked so tirelessly to make this day possible. I want to thank most of all each and every one of you for taking the time this morning to pause to celebrate these brave men and women. Now I ask all of you here present to give yourselves another rousing round of applause for this great day. I always say it's a great day at CAU. Today is especially so because of these veterans, because of what they have done to make this day possible for all of us. Thank you all so much for your service. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dean Yudoka, and thanks to our live and virtual audiences for participating in today's CAU Salute honor and duty reflecting forward our official Veterans Day observance. Now, as per tradition, we will now retire the colors, followed by the sending forth by CAU chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Tanya L. Miles. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of colors, followed by the sending forth.
as we prepare to go forward from this place, can we join in giving God a hand clap of praise for this celebration on this day? I am not only grateful, but I am inspired. I'm reminded that freedom is not free. Freedom is not only physical, but it is also spiritual and mental, which means that we all are on a battlefield as we go about our day. So let us go forward from this place reminded that it takes courage, valor, strength, sacrifice of self in order that God's kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Be inspired by the veterans. They have given us a legacy to live up to. So go forward and be well. Go forward that peace and love might be yours and that of the others in this great land that we all love. Be blessed. Amen. <laughs>